Greetings, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, thanks for joining me on our new Christian studies for Victorious Christian Living. We're up to session nine today, and our top subject today is water baptism. Water baptism, uh, very powerful. Jesus says that that we must be must be water baptized, must be baptized, and uh, and Jesus was baptized by immersion. Uh, so it's a, a public declaration uh, of an inward change of our hearts. It's a, an, an, obedience, um, uh, an, an obedient public declaration uh, following our, our repentance and acknowledgement and asking Jesus Christ to come into our hearts uh, to be our Lord and Saviour. Uh, it's a public declaration of an outward uh, indication of a changed heart that's inside of us. So water baptism is an act of obedience and it's also a command of Jesus. It's a public confession of our faith and our commitment to uh, Jesus Christ. It was an outward sign uh, of our commitment uh, that, uh, that we've taken in our heart. Um, it's a bit like a, a wedding ring. A wedding ring is an outward sign of our love and commitment to someone. And, uh, and it's a bit like that with, uh, with water baptism. Baptism is an outward uh, sign of, our, of a changed heart and our commitment uh, to, to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. Uh, even Jesus said that if you don't confess me before men, I won't confess you before my Father. And it's, a, it's an outward uh, a public declaration and also an outward uh, obedience and our, our commitment of us to be uh, yielded to God and surrendering our hearts to God. Uh, you know, we can't afford to have any pride in our hearts, in our lives. We just can't afford to. We just need to be, hum we need to be humble and a willingness to yield ourselves to him and, and to be a follower of Jesus Christ and just to be obedient in that. Matthew 28, uh, verse 19, it says, Go therefore and make, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Very powerful, very powerful. In Acts 8, 38, So he commanded the chariot to stand still. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. So Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, you remember the story, he was going home from Jerusalem and Philip was uh, there and he, God told him to go, for, go near and to talk to him. And he was looking at the um, uh, Isaiah, I think it was, in the, in the Old Testament. That's all they had in those days. And the, the New Testament hadn't been written. And, um, and he, he spoke to him and spoke to him the, uh, the salvation message. Um, and, and he surrendered his heart to the Lord. And the uh, Ethiopian eunuch said, here's some water. What, what's preventing me from being water baptized? So they stopped and went down in the water and, um, and they were water. Uh, he, uh, Philip baptized him and then he was transported away. He just went. Um, and so that's a, a, exciting. So every person who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior should be baptized should be baptized and every child who um, comes to a, an age of understanding that uh, G, that they are a sinner that Jesus died on the cross for them and they uh, understand that and they've asked Jesus Christ to come into their hearts and their lives uh, also should be baptized so you know I, I believe there's a, an age of, um, of accountability uh, where a child will get to an age where they are accountable um, for their sins and those sins uh, that they commit will be counted against them. Uh, but there's also a, an age of understanding and, th and there's no set rule on that age of understanding, but there's also um, accountability, I should say, and, and there's also a, a no set rule about the age of understanding. Uh, somewhere in that ch child uh, primary school age, uh, you know, from uh, four, five, six up to uh, 10, uh, you know, the, the, I've known, you know, young children as, as young as six and seven being water baptized because they just know that Jesus is their Lord and the Savior. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that and with them being uh, baptized uh, by um, immersion. 
So, um, so water baptism uh, through immersion is a symbol of our willingness to yield our lives to God and surrender uh, to, to, to him, uh, to, to his rulership over our lives. It's very important that we understand that. And then if you look down in um, Acts uh, chapter 8, verse 12, but when uh, they uh, believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Now, this is uh, Philip again. He's an amazing evangelist, went down to Samaria and uh, spoke the gospel to the people down there. And um, they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And in verse um, 12 there, it says that, that he baptized them. Now, I don't know why he didn't baptize them in the Holy Spirit, laid hands on them to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but somehow that didn't occur. And the, uh, the apostles in Jerusalem heard about that Samaria had received Jesus. So they sent Peter and John uh, down uh, to, uh, to them to lay hands on them, uh, well, to have a look and see what was happening, I guess, and then realizing they hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they laid hands on them and to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So you see there, there's two separate experiences. They were born again and then they were uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. So uh, born again and water baptized and then baptized in the Holy Spirit. Two uh, separate experiences. Um, so that's important. And, um, you know, if you look at uh, Cornelius' household, uh, they received Jesus and received the baptism in the Holy Spirit nearly the same uh, one after the other. And they hadn't been water baptized. They, I guess they would have been baptized after. So there's no set rule. Born again, water baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit, or in the case of Cornelius' household, they were born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then probably water baptized. It doesn't say that, but uh, water baptized uh, later. So very important that, the, there, that there's uh, two separate experiences, um, or three, I should say, uh, with, within. It's quite clearly there that in Philip, in Acts chapter 8, you look at the whole story there, uh, they received Jesus as uh, Saviour, water baptised, and then baptised in the Holy Spirit um, a, a week or so later. So um, very important we understand all of that. Colossians chapter 2, this is going on to something new and something different. Uh, in him, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, in him you were also circumcised, with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead so um you know water baptism is our identification with Jesus death burial and resurrection uh, we we go down in the water. We we uh, and uh, we are raised and we are raised up and resurrected into newness of life. So it's a, a an identification with Jesus' death. We go in the water. We ra are raised up again in, into new uh, re resurrected and then go into newness of life. So uh, the death and the burial and the raising of newness of life is our indication. Uh, of with with water baptism and that's why it's so important uh, that we are water baptized because we identify with all of that and we identify that by faith uh, and something that we do in our hearts I know it's an outward sign but it's an outward sign of something that's happening in our hearts and we are do we identify that our old sin nature is dead and buried dead and buried and we identify with Jesus death and burial and then we raise in newness of life with that resurrection power of God living inside of us and we go forth in, in our new nature. Our, our old nature is dead and buried. We must remember that and that's why it's so important that we are water baptized. It's a command so it's uh, you know something that we are also uh, we humble our hearts and we are obedient to God. Uh, we are yielding our lives to his rulership and, and reigning in our hearts and our lives and we do that uh, through, through water baptism. Uh, you know, I've known men and women as old as 90 being water baptized. So it doesn't matter how, uh, how old you are, even uh, how young you are. It's got to be something that you do in your heart and, and, it's an, and you want to uh, um, confess, make a public declaration, um, you know, of, of that. 
But you know what? You, you've really got to understand that when you make a public declaration of that, uh, you've got to break through because when you do that, the enemy will come against you. And I don't wish to put any fear in your heart, but when, you, uh, when you're water baptized, uh, you're making a public declaration that you're standing with God. Uh, and, and we've got to be realized that when we put our heads uh, above the, the pulpit, uh, the puppet, what's that word? And, um, and uh, we make ourselves vulnerable. And, uh, but we, we're trusting in God. Don't get fearful about that you're going to be attacked. But just realize you're trusting in God and you just keep trusting in God. The enemy cannot touch you. Uh, but there's always spiritual battles and spiritual warfare uh, against believers all the time but even more so when you're water baptized but never get fearful about that because you're always victor victorious uh, you're greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so you just break through by faith and you just keep going you don't worry about the things of the enemy uh, you just keep going because he cannot come anywhere near you uh, that's important that we do that so water baptism um, you know, is a dying to the things of this world. And it's a, a public declaration that you're dying to the things of this world. It's an indication uh, with our death and burial resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our sin nature is dead and buried at salvation. And we declare this at water baptism. Uh, the circumcision, I'll just go back and have a look at that, um, that scripture again. So in Colossians 2, 11 and 12, in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by the putting off of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through, through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So this uh, circumcision that Paul is referring to is the cutting away of our old sin nature um, and that's our spiritual circumcisions are cutting away, uh, dying to that sin, uh, the sin, our old sin nature. And we identify that with the death and burial. And then we are raised in newness of life, the same as Jesus was. So this spiritual circumcision has been accomplished the moment we are born again in our spirit. And, uh, and, and we've got to realize that we are a brand new creature. We are a brand new creation. Old things have passed away. Our old nature is dead and buried and new things, all things become new. So we are raising ourselves, uh, got, uh, raising up in newness of life and going on with God. And it's just a powerful um, uh, declaration of that. And, uh, you know, our, our old sin nature is dead and buried. And the only reason why we sin is not because uh, it's our nature to sin anymore, it, but it's because we haven't renewed our minds. And we, uh, like I've always said this, that we have one new born again spirit nature living inside of us. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us and he's joined himself with our spirit and he's living in our spirit. Um, but we have two minds. We have a carnal mind and a renewed mind. And, and, and as our born again nature uh, is growing in God, um, uh, you know, sorry, not growing, but as we releasing that spirit, that spirit, Holy Ghost Spirit, don't do them as power into our minds, into our soul. It's beginning to have an impact in our lives and in our actions and, and all of that. Uh, you know, is multiplied when we are born again. It's just a, an influx of the revelation knowledge that comes into our hearts and into our lives and into our minds. And uh, we are beginning to renew our minds. So we're allowing that spirit, uh, Holy Spirit that lives inside of us to be transferred into our soul realm. And we are renewing our minds. And we, so it's been transferred into our, into our hearts and our minds. And it's being renewed back to the Word of God. And uh, we need to continually do that, continually renew our minds. And that's why it's important to read the word. Uh, we're continuing to renew our minds so that our renewed minds always uh, prevail uh, over our, our, our carnal minds. And that's very important that we do that. And, and that's the only reason why we sin is because we haven't renewed our minds in those areas and, and those areas where the enemy is attacking us and, uh, and we, choose to, uh, we choose to follow that, uh, that, that temptation. Um, sin is about giving in to temptation. Uh, we don't deliberately uh, sin because we haven't got a sin nature. It is dead and buried. Uh, uh, sin comes through temptation. And uh, so when it comes, 
uh, and we, we go that way, uh, it's because we're just following our carnal nature. Uh, we need to uh, renew that mind and in those areas of our mind uh, back to the Word of God and to see that renewed mind always triumphing and prevailing over our carnal mind. It's very important that we do that. So as we're growing in God, we are dying to the sins of the flesh. Okay, as we're growing in God, we are dying to the sins of the flesh. This uh, spiritual circumcision that happens at our when we are born again is just a, a, um, a sometimes a, a too much for us to comprehend all in one go uh, because we, we and so we're growing in God we're maturing into uh, 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 seeing those things uh, passing away and all things become new that's a gradual pro process as we're growing in God and we just got to realize that we're not instantaneously saints um, uh, you know as soon as we're born again we're growing in God renewing our minds to the word of God and we're growing in him growing closer to God uh, maturing in God, we're building a relationship, building a faith relationship. As the Holy Spirit makes us aware of things in our lives, uh, we begin to crucify those things of the flesh. Uh, we don't cast out the flesh, we crucify ourselves. So we're starving those sins of the flesh. So they don't live any longer. When you starve something, it dies. And, uh, and we've got to realize that. As we, and as we're growing in God, we're starving those uh, sins of the flesh, uh, that, um, uh, that those uh, five uh, senses and, and we're allowing our, our spirit man to be our dominant uh, part of our lives, not our, 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 the sins of the flesh or our flesh uh, or our carnal, uh, carnal uh, minds. We're not allowing them to be dominant. We're allowing our spirit renewed mind to be the dominant part of our lives. And that's important that we do that. So we celebrate. We celebrate... Um, uh, that uh, that cutting away that that circumcision of the sins of the flesh, and also we celebrate uh, those uh, um, uh, victories that we have over the, uh, bondages and the strongholds from the past. We break through, and uh, one this is one thing that our our pastor here at Ignite Revival is uh, we celebrate that by being water baptized again. And there's nothing wrong with being water baptized a number of times, and we. We celebrate those victories and we, as we break through um, areas of the sins of the flesh uh, or those, uh, we overcome uh, bondages or strongholds from the past, uh, we, we, we get people to be water baptized again. And I've been baptized a number of times uh, and it's just a celebration uh, of um, you know, the original water baptism, a celebration of what Jesus did in our lives and we celebrate that and we rise in newness of life. Uh, I don't know whether I've told this story, um, but uh, I was um, I, I, I was I gave my heart to the Lord. I was um, had prayer for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I didn't break through in speaking in tongues. I was water baptized about two weeks after that. I came up out of the water, uh, wanting to just praise God, and I come up um, speaking in tongues. It was just an amazing uh, celebration. We celebrate uh, our, our, our uh, salvation by being water baptized and, and, um, and it's just an, an amazing experience. We also celebrate those, um, those steps along the way. Uh, as we grow in God, we're celebrating as, we, uh, as, the, God, as the Holy Ghost brings a, a revelation knowledge of uh, things around our, our lives, uh, bondages and strongholds. Uh, and uh, puts his finger on the, some sins of the, of the flesh that we need to overcome. And we, by revelation knowledge, by faith, we realize that Jesus has defeated all the works of the evil one, that Jesus defeated all sin, that he had victory over sin. So we also can have victory over sin because his nature is, lives inside of us. So uh, we have victory over sin. We have victory over temptations, a vi victory over uh, you know circumstances, uh, trials and tribulation, and uh, and so what our, our our pastor does, we we celebrate those and we get water baptized again and we celebrate those and it's just a an amazing victory. We break through and, and we celebrate that. So it's very important that we do that. So we celebrate and we confirm our agreement with what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. Through water baptism, we are taking a stand and we are acknowledging the victory that Jesus won for us on the cross against those strongholds 
and um, those bondages from our past. And it's just beautiful. People are breaking through and, and overcoming and going on with God. They've broken through. And uh, so it, all of that takes a, it's a bit too much right at the start when we board again. So we break through in stages and we're growing and maturing God as we grow in God. And we understand who we are in God. We have that revelation knowledge that is transferred from our spirit man to our soul realm and our minds are renewed and according to the word of God and we break through. We don't have to um, follow after, our, we don't have to live our lives to our carnal minds and the sins of the flesh. We live our lives to God. We live unto him uh, and it's powerful when you get a revelation of that. So we celebrate that by being water baptized again and, and it's just an amazing breakthrough in people's lives. So Christ has already, um, look, sorry, let's have a look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And we need to realize that we don't cast out the sins of the flesh, we crucify them. And as we crucify them, uh, we take life out of them and they eventually die. So in when, uh, when the enemy comes to tempt us in those areas, um, we, we just ignore them completely because we're going on with God. We've had the victory in that area and uh, it has no effect on our lives because we're just loving God and going on and growing in God. And it's powerful when that happens. And we need to uh, realize we break through in that by faith. It's always a faith gospel. Salvation comes by faith. Healing comes by faith. Breakthroughs come by faith. Deliverance comes by faith. By grace, by, by grace through faith. The grace of God is the operation of the power of God that causes us to break through into all that God has for us, into, into his calling and his destiny that he has for our lives. So Christ has already provided everything for us and placed it in our born-again spirit. And uh, we need to take possession of that by faith. We have victory. Our spirit is totally born again. Uh, it doesn't sin, doesn't want to sin, and has a heart after God. So we're transferring that into our soul realm. And our soul realm is being, uh, our minds are being renewed uh, so that our, our, our renewed mind is always prevailing over our carnal mind understand that i uh, i give that expression uh, that example about the two dogs the brown dog fighting the spotted dog which one wins the one that wins is the one that you feed the most if you feed your your renewed mind by fellowshipping uh, reading the word praying and and going on with god praying in tongues uh, that's always going to triumph over our our carnal minds and our carnal minds will die and our renewed minds will always live in triumph and uh, that's the one that wins. The one wind is the one that you feed the most. So it's important that we take possession of that by faith. We must draw these new, crea new creation realities out of our spirit by renewing our minds uh, and, and manifesting them um, in our lives. Colossians chapter 2 verses uh, 13 to 15. And you being dead in your trespasses, and the uncirc uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together. We uh, he has made us alive together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Verse fourteen, having wiped out the handwritten handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a spectacle of them triumphing over them in it, triumphing over them through the cross. So uh, Jesus has disarmed, disabled and defeated principalities and powers and dominions. Uh, they have no dominion over our lives uh, at all. And it's exciting when we grab a hold of that by faith. All our sins, past, present and future have been dealt with through the atonement of Christ on the cross. Being born again, uh, quickened and made alive with Christ reverses the effects of sin and spiritual death. We are now joint heirs with Jesus. We are seated together with him in the heavenly places. We are members of the royal household of God. And, uh, you know, we, we, we break through. We, we are sons of God. We are adopted uh, into his family. We are now seated together with Christ in the very throne room of God, with God uh, in the very presence of God. It's important that we understand that. 
And, uh, you know, we, we celebrate, like I said, we celebrate these victories, we celebrate these breakthroughs. And, um, and, and like our, our pastors doing this at the moment, we, we celebrate that by being water baptized again. We, it's, love, uh, it's lovely being water baptized when you first get born again and we break through, uh, but we, we, we come up against things from the past and our strongholds and the sins of the flesh and, and the Holy Ghost uh, begins to uh, deal with those things in our lives so that we can break through. He doesn't deal with them to put you down. He deals with them so you can break through. And, um, and so we celebrate those victories. We take a stand. We acknowledge all that Jesus has done for us on the cross, that we are more than conquerors, that we are overcomers. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Uh, and we celebrate that and we can be water baptized again and, and celebrate that victory uh, that he's won for us on the cross. We take a stand. We acknowledge what he's done for us on the cross. It is very important that we do that by faith. Um, you know, if you can't be water baptized uh, again, uh, and, or even a couple of times, you know, that's fine. You, you still break through by faith. It's great to be done the first time, and, and it's important that we do that. It's a, being a, it's a show of our obedience to God uh, that we do that. So, um, you know, we, we don't overcome sin personally. Jesus has already overcome and had the, won the victory for us um, uh, over, over sin. And we live that, we live that victory through him. Um, we manifest that victory through him. Jesus has already conquered death and we have his resurrection power living inside of us. So born again believers are, are, are not, um, uh, we're not born again uh, through water baptism. We are born again by surrendering our hearts and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, acknowledging that we were sinners, acknowledging our sin, ask God to forgive us of our sins. Uh, so water baptism, we're not saved through water baptism. We are saved through accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, what he did for us on the cross. That's how, that's how we're saved, not through water baptism. It's just a, 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 an outward expression of something that's changed, that we've done in our hearts, that we made a decision in our hearts to be born again, and it's an outward sign of what we've made in our, in our hearts. Um, so we are saved and we're risen with Christ through faith. Uh, and, and it's just a powerful uh, um, a public declaration of what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. So I hope you got something out of that. It's very important that we get water baptized. We make a public declaration. We confess uh, Jesus before men. If we don't do that, he won't confess us before the Father. Very important that we do that. Uh, and as it being a, a step of obedience, uh, a step of humility and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords of our lives and we're willing to surrender and yield our lives to all that God has for us. And we need, that's an, an ongoing process. We're yielding our lives. We are continually uh, yielding our lives. I mentioned uh, there the other day, we are uh, continuing uh, forgiving God, uh, forgiving, uh, for, for coming under God's forgiveness as he, uh, as we, uh, he exposes things in our lives, uh, strongholds, uh, bondages from the past, or when we go into, uh, uh, into our following our carnal minds, we, we, there's an ongoing uh, forgiveness that, that God is pouring out upon our lives, but we've got to have an ongoing repentance, of, of, of course, as well. So it's the same with us. We're growing in God and we celebrate those victories. Uh, we celebrate uh, the water baptism when we get born again and we, we celebrate uh, that our victories also, our ongoing victories also with uh, other water baptism. And that's uh, perfectly proper for you to do that. So I hope you got something out of that. Hope you're encouraged and strengthened by that. Uh, it's exciting uh, what God's doing um, in our lives and, um, and growing in God. God wants us uh, to grow in holiness and righteousness, uh, to break through those sins of the flesh, uh, break through those bondages and strongholds from our past uh, so that we just uh, loving God and being all that God has created us uh, to be. So thanks for joining me today. Um, I'll, uh, this will be posted up in um, my, uh, my YouTube channel called Jeff uh, Shares the Gospel. Uh, click into that, click on playlist, and then you'll see... Um, uh, new Christian Studies for Victorious Christian Living and uh, I'll post uh, session 9 up there uh, today and I'll see you again in session 10. So bless you all. Have a great day.